And today we're going to have another video where we go back in time a bit. Actually quite a bit back in time. Maybe four or five years. I'll have to look at the original video. I don't remember. But this large box of broken Hot Wheels was given to me by one of my technicians. And this one caught my eye. It's a 1975 Chevy Monza. And my aunt used to have one of these. Uh, she passed away last year. And this is why it caught my eye originally. She was living at the time. But, uh, hey, she had one of these cars. I remember it as a kid. I remember all kinds of stories about this car. It was full of rust, but it was a fun car. And you can see by the paint, somebody enjoyed it. Painted it with, uh, I don't know, house paint something and it looks pretty bad but in all honesty it doesn't look a lot worse than the final result in the original video it was pretty bad looking back on it now now I can use all the excuses in the world and it was for my grandson but I should have maybe done a little bit better job and did a better job of keeping it out of his little hands so he didn't end up with all of those fingerprints all over it but aside from the fingerprints the paint was garbage. I mean, it was complete garbage. I used some, uh, I believe, testers enamel, and it just never really fully cured because even after that video, it still continued to develop more and more fingerprints like in the paint. Now, I guess I have to explain something here. I didn't think I'd ever have to explain this, but obviously this video, I'm doing a voiceover. I'm not talking as I'm doing this video. This video was from five years ago. And the reason why I mention that is because the last video where everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of you, 10%, let's say, thought the mud was fake on that car, which it was not. Now, there was actually more mud around it. Maybe I should have brought the entire ball of mud in, but the mud on top was there. I probably should have scraped it off because it did look a little fake, but I had some comments that, you know, I said I this was a year or two ago and we're starting it now, that people thought that the voiceover, that I was actually filming that, you know, I found it and waited two years to make that video, and that was still the mud from two years ago. No, the video was taken like two years ago or a year, I don't recall now, and I'm just doing a voiceover. So, again, what you're looking at now is from four or five years ago. I'm not talking as I'm filming. I'm doing a voiceover. Now, at the end of the video, the second half, you'll notice that I am talking as I'm doing the video, but just wanted to kind of make that clear. I didn't think I ever had to do that, but maybe it's a little bit confusing. Um, yeah, so that's how that happened. Now, as I'm doing the voiceover for this redo, I totally forgot that the interior was originally clear. It's black, and that black paint held up really well. Who would have thought? Oh boy. Here we go with that original paint job. Now, the the paint itself, the flow and the evenness it looks okay. It's the color and it still looks sticky. And I didn't recall at the end of the video, which I've already recorded, if I used what I used for the details, and I definitely used paint markers as you see there. But when we started to paint those details, it looked okay and then you can see here it's already a fingerprint on one door and at the bottom right there there's paint missing and there she is in all her glory actually all her blurry glory holy smokes all right so let's begin not gonna be a whole lot of content on this one probably just to repaint some details uh, we did most of the work in the original video. But we definitely need to redo some things. You can see my grandson is really out of dirt. And we're going to get rid of this future shine on this one. It's a little bit too glossy. So we will... Uh, try to clean that up with hot soapy water so let's get uh, let's get this body stripped I'm not sure if I'm gonna change the wheels I actually like these wheels and tires on this casting so I probably will keep those I don't know I just like the way it looks we'll see thought about lowering a little bit but I like the stance as well so I don't think I'm gonna change a whole lot just uh, strip it clean the interior again clean up the windshield, paint 
some details and uh, go from there. This is a stripper we are going to be using. I can just let this sit or you can just start. See it's coming off pretty easy with that stripper. Still doesn't work as well as the original aircraft stripper. That stuff is amazing. Wish I still had some of it, but it does well enough. Could just let that sit, but oh well, we didn't. We scrubbed it a little bit. All right, we've got it all cleaned up here. Uh, it's still a little wet. I need to get a little bit of that paint out of the crack of the rear deck lid. That's fine, but everywhere else it's pretty clean. Now I know I said I probably wasn't gonna paint this brown, and I'm not gonna paint it brown, exactly brown, but I do wanna paint it some sort of brown because I don't remember in the first video if I had mentioned it or not. The reason why I painted that one brown is because my aunt, she had a brown one as when I was a kid, I remembered it. And she passed away last year, so that's one reason why I'm glad to have this car back from my grandson. He kind of didn't play with it that much and uh, he didn't care. So I'm going to paint it brown again, but I'm going to paint it Spectra Flame Root Beer. I think that'd be cool. Now instead of polishing this, this casting up like I normally do with the Spectra Flame, I'm going to use some of their base coat, which you can get by without polishing. Now it's not going to have a true Spectra Flame finish on it because it'll have this metal base coat that just gives it a little bit of even coat or an even base, I should say, and a little bit of shine, but it will still, it'll still look pretty good, I think. And of course, then I'll add the hardener. So I think we're gonna try that and see how it looks. Worst case scenario, we just strip it down again. So we'll wait for this to dry. I'm not gonna do any kind of prime. This will basically be my primer. And then, uh, We'll get it all finished up and then we'll do the little details. So and not only are we getting the paint out of the cracks by doing this, you can also, with just an X-Acto, you can cut the lines a little bit deeper to give you more definition. You can either press kind of hard or you can just do multiple passes. Okay, we have the base coat down. You can see it gives it a metal flake look. It's actually looks pretty good. Um, the cool thing about the silver base from the Redline shop is that you can mix this with their Spectra Flame paints and you can actually get a metallic effect. It's, it's pretty neat. Now the next thing to do is to mix up some root beer, shoot it, and then go from there. We'll let it cure for a couple days before we actually start painting on the details. I could probably go four or five hours, but I like to give it some time to harden and that way we don't have any issues along the way. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot the root beer and then we'll have a look at what it looks like and then uh, it'll be a little bit of a waiting game. We are back and this is exactly the color that I was going for. It's almost like that Porsche chocolate brown. You can see the metal flake in there kind of bleeding through from that base coat. Not too much of it though. That is, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to see. So that is a positive result. So we're gonna let this cure again for a couple of days. So it'll only be like five seconds for you, but two days for me. So we will be back. Oh boy. All right, a little bit of a do over. So you can see I've got some putty around some certain areas. What had happened is once I painted that base coat, I noticed a, a little divot here and one right here, and they didn't look too bad, but once I had put that final coat on and it dried, you could definitely see them. And it, it looked like a dark spot because it's actually a dent, so the paint had built up in there. So I went ahead and took some of the, uh, the putty and we're going to just flatten that out once that dries. So right now it's we just put it on. So we got to let it dry for a little bit, sand it down, and then start over. And on the back, there's also part of the bumper that I kind of want to address. So you can see there's this, I don't know what, it looks like part of the casting maybe, part of the sprue 
right here there's this additional like chunk so I think I'm gonna sand that off as well just gonna flatten it out so it's gonna take a probably a little while but I don't want to go too far into that bumper yeah, there's definitely a small one there so we'll add some more putty there There we go. Just smear it along that door. And then we'll... All right, we've got it done. Not sure if it's going to catch it on camera, but we've got a little, little slither of uh, filler there. One right there. I'm not touching it because I've already got it all prepped. And then we also did a little bit on the back bumper. See a little green? And then we had a little section there, a little section over here. It's really hard to see because, again, after you sand it down, there's barely any on there, just enough to fill in those little holes. That was the main area of concern. So that's filled in. We're going to go ahead and shoot our base back on there and then uh, reshoot the uh, final color. Okay, we are right back where we started. Looks pretty good. Although that little divot there is gone, um, this is Spectra Flame. Even the metallic kind of bleeds through, as well as the Top coat, you would think it wouldn't, but it shows a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. You can see it right there. It shows a little bit of that putty. It showed up a little dark, but I'm okay with that. I could have primed it, but then the silver metallic wouldn't have bled through the, it just wouldn't have looked right. So I'm going to kind of leave it the way it is. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm happy with it. A lot better than it was. So once it's completely dry, we'll start painting some of the details and we will get this bad boy done. Okay, we're just painting on some of these details. We're gonna do the tail lights. And there's not really a definitive line of where these should be split, right about there. And the paint I'm actually using is Hobby Color Clear Red. If you watch the last video for the Ferrari we did the clear orange for the taillights because it was red um, I actually had tried this first but the uh, the orange give it more contrast of course this being brown it's you know the red works perfect we can kind of use the toothpick to just define our our line Still need to work on this one a little bit. It's the regular orange. Let's see how this looks. This is actually orange yellow. Not bad at all. We'll go with that. Next, we're going to paint the headlights. We've already done the passenger side. At first, I'm going to throw on some tester silver, and then we might highlight it with some, some white, some flat white. We'll wait for the silver to dry and see what it looks like. But again, just like the tail lights, I'm just dabbing. And if we mess up, this is testers enamel, so we could just wipe it down real quick with a toothpick or or a uh, just a Q-tip. Right now, it's actually not looking too bad, and that's very tiny. I mean, it's it's pretty small, so it looks nice and big on the camera because I have it up close. But it's very small, and I doubt you'll see it with the naked eye. Anyway, all right, we've got some more details painted in here. We've got the, we put the little backup lights. We've got the bumper, which is still drying. The Matolo pen did break in the middle of doing this, so I had to wipe it all up and then do it with a brush. Uh, this is like the second Matolo pen I've had that, that just snapped. Uh, it actually comes apart. And of course, we got the front here. Uh, looks pretty good though. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint this section here black like I did the last time. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to leave it brown or paint it black. I don't know. But other than that, that's the last thing I have to decide on. Everything, all the other little details are done. I think it looks pretty good. Um, good enough for me at least. But, yeah. 
and I guess I'm gonna paint them. I think I like it better, the way it looks better without them, but the real car, they were they were black there, so I um, mean it kind of breaks up the body line from the roof line. So we'll finish this up and we should be done. And we are finally done. I must say I think it looks 100% better than the first one. Maybe you'll agree or won't agree. The first one, if you watched the video, it was for my grandson. And I knew he was going to destroy it, but I didn't count on him picking it up when it was wet. Um, I think I mentioned that in the video. There was fingerprints on it. There was a piece of paint or a section of paint missing on the lower rear quarter. It was uh, kind of a mess. They used to live with us, and he's my little buddy, and he would hang out with me while I did these. That's the reason why, you know, people say hide them, whatever. Well, he was actually down here most of the time playing in the hobby room, so... And it was his car, so I didn't really care. But having said all that, I still could have done a better job. I used the paint pens, or the paint markers, I believe, uh, and it just didn't turn out too great. Now, having said that, I'm not entirely pleased with this one, specifically with the Matolo. I use these pens fairly often, but they, they seem to, to break right there, to split. And this was a pretty new pen. Uh, it was maybe a year old, but it was in the package. So when I opened it up, I used it a couple times and it started split. You can see where it's leaking out there. And the reason why that's an issue is I think it gets old, so the chrome doesn't look quite as chrome. It looks more of a, a silver, but it still is more chrome than like a silver paint would be, if that makes any sense. And I did not clear over it. If you clear over the Matolo pens, they will turn to like a like a gray color. I've done it before and I was highly disappointed. Had a actually a larger scale model, not, nothing for the channel, and cleared it and it looked like total garbage. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And the reason why that's kind of a problem on this one, um, I did the door handles. They look, eh, they look okay. Uh, they're in the right section, but they're not as chrome as I'd like. But the bumper, it's the bumper headlights and the fog lights. They all kind of look very similar even though the Matolo does have that more of that sheen or that, that pop of the chrome, the headlights and, and the fogs, they kind of just blend in. We did end up painting these little side pillar, or the B pillar, I would call it. Uh, we painted actually the inside. Uh, so we painted inside of the actual door and the back side of it on the inside. Instead of just leaving that the, the brown, we actually did a little bit more detail there. And of course, the tail lights with the backup lights. And I definitely need to find some replacement glass for this casting. Looking at the video, you can see where it's a little crooked. Now, I tried to glue it in. It makes it look like the roof is actually bent down, but it's not. That's just the glass. It's it's really old. It originally attached to the interior, and it's, it's just a mess. It's a hot mess. It looks better on video. This is one thing that looks better on video than it does in person. It is really bad. So, I'll probably search eBay to see if I can find another one of these castings, rip it apart, and just use the, uh, the glass for that one. If you are interested in any of the tools that I use in this video, check out the links. They're located below the video in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links, but I list everything I use in these videos. If something's got a bad link, shoot me a message or a, a comment, and I'll find you the right thing. I know some of those change throughout, especially the screws. It seems like the, the screws change every other day. One day they're available, the next day they're not, and it, it happens. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. As always, thanks for watching.